gives different perspectives on uh, what you can do with business. But, but if there's one thing uh, about it is hearing all these different stories and knowing there's always a power play to be done and if you are too naive, like you said earlier, and you're not antis anticipating next move and making notes of certain people's behavior in some strange moments, it could catch up to you. That could happen in business, just like it is in your world. The difference is in your world, you could get killed. In a business world, you're put out of business. Well, you know, I talked earlier about this kid, Frank, a big yeah. guy I hurt, right? We'll use him as an example. I like the guy. It was nothing personal. The, the Johnny Canigia and the John, Genie at the time asked me to hurt him over the drug business. but. The thing is, I liked him, I respect him, he, and he was legitimately a tough kid. He was a big kid, 6'5", mm -hmm. whatever. His friends, tough guys, left him. Left him. And they didn't retaliate with him afterwards. And they didn't try to. Now they're talking. These same guys had the opportunity, and this is why I'm telling kids, not even just one end, the other end. The yeah. guys I even hurt, or guys you know, I, I uh -huh. respect. Y y I'm trying to say, even the guys like that, Look what's going on to them. Where's their friends when they needed them? There was a made guy at the time, Jerry Asara, was with him, standing with him, and I told him, get lost or I'll hurt you too. And he walked. His father just got a, a, basically a life sentence for Asara. They accused him of being involved mm. with the Latanza stuff. And so, but his son, so, and his other friend, Frankie, now is in the neighborhood with a big mouth. Where were you when he needed you? Where were you coming now 30 years later when we were all retired? Where were you when we were all loading guns? And I say that, forget about shooting a gun, these guys never loaded a gun unless it was a water pistol. So I'm trying to say the same thing over and over and over again, right. as much as I can. These kids need to understand, stay away from this life because they don't, they think that just like I did as a kid, and it's very hard fame, for them to make prestige, them understand. Fame, prestige, you know, the whole so nine, you know, the movie Goodfellas, and you go out and the ladies and, you know, the cars and all that stuff, which a part of it is true. I mean, when I talk to a lot of these guys, Listen, you guys have partied hard. You guys have had a lot of fun. I own the hottest nightclubs around. I had everything. But I'm going to tell you, when I sat in that cell alone and yeah. it was all over, every one of my friends in that life started ratting on me, all of them, like 50 guys, 50-something, 50 mm. actually. They all went to the grand juries on me. You can check with Florida prosecutor, Middle District of Florida, yeah. and ask them. Because when these conversations started, I think it was 54 was the number, actually, that ratted on me. All these mob-made guys ratting on me. When all the money was gone, so was all the women. Sure. So was all everybody else, and so was my even my other friends that were from the street that weren't killers, but they were you know, playing around on the street with drugs. And There was nobody near me. I was alone in a cell, and I'm going to tell you like I tell everybody, because if you're going to be fake, you can't talk to kids. And you're sitting in that cell, and you're crying. And I like when somebody said, did you cry? Yeah, I'm a man. I'm not a robot. Of course I cried. And they said, well, you did this, you did that. I'm not asking anybody to feel bad for me. I says, that's not why I'm saying it. I'm saying it to kids so they understand right. that this ain't all about that. And, and when your kids aren't seeing you, and I didn't see some of my kids. I have four kids. I didn't see two of them for 10 years. Uh, you know, so I had disagreements with the mom. And the mom, and I'm friends with her now with a reconciliation. She's remarried. But... This is the reality of the life that the kids got to understand. And when my uncle died, he was like my father. I lived with him in California. I didn't see him. I never got to say goodbye to him. And, you know, you're sitting in that cell and you're crying your eyes. And there's times when you're crying. So no one is saying to me, well, poor you. Well, fuck you. You know, because I know people out there. Sure. And I'm not asking anybody to say, fuck, poor me. I'm not asking anybody. This is my life. I stood on my two feet and I got to accept everything. But the reality of a kid that wants to go on the street is I need to tell you. You're going to cry. And if you say you're not, I know tough guys, killers. I mean, killers, they ain't never getting out of jail. And I got a ton of friends that are on the streets, still in jail and, and off the streets. So people will say, well, I seen him with this guy. I don't lie and say I don't know them anymore. A lot of them are my friends still. I just ain't involved with them anymore. I'll have lunch with them around the world. I'm talking about gangsters in and out of jails. I got a ton of friends in jails. I got fan guys that write me on a constant basis. I says, I shouldn't use the word fan. I says, because I respect them for writing me from jail, and they tell me we wish we could be man enough mm -hmm. or do what you're doing. And I said, it took me a long time to be a man like this. It's easy doing the other stuff. I'll say it over again. Easy to shoot and kill. This is the hard part, to admit all this stuff and try to get, convince some kids if you can save one or two. This is a terrible time to want to live that life because you got 300 million cameras everywhere. You got 300 million cameras, everybody's doing live, everything is recorded, everybody's walking over to record. It's a terrible time to do it. But watch the news, right? And I'm not even talking about gangsters, just criminals. 
doing dumb shit, and they know there's a camera there, and they still do it. And they're almost saying cheese on the camera, and they're walking That's down the block. That's what I'm saying to you. They, they, obviously, there's a lot of fools. But one of the great equalizers, I believe, of getting people to not want to uh, go in that direction of a life is social media. I think that's, that's done. The social media and smartphones have changed the game. John, what book are you currently working on that we can share with our audience? If there was one book we could share, which one would it well, be? Well, this is Susan Pike with me. It's uh, called uh, Darkest Hour. There's going to be a series, Darkest Hour 2 and 3. Okay. Uh, this was a setup book after Gotti's Rules because I did Gotti's Rules with George Anastasia. And the setup book, uh, we don't really talk about my childhood. This is a setup book for two and three. And two and three, I'm going to really get into all these things I'm mm -hmm. talking about shootings. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get into more. But this book, different than the first, Gotti's Rules, is I'm going to list just like I did names, like I just did now. And I'm going to make sure that there's going to be people that were there, witnesses. So if somebody wants to contact and see the truthfulness, I guess it's they can contact them. And then I'm going to do a scorecard of every gangster I mentioned in that book. How many armed robberies they did, how many actual shootings they did themselves. That should be what interesting. Are they about? Uh, you're going to piss off a lot of people if they're alive. You're going to piss off a lot of those. Well, uh, It's going to be interesting for them to come back and say, that's not true. Who, I did this well, many. I had this many who's numbers. Who's going to say? If I say Carmine Ignello, I'm going to use him because he had a big mouth over right. the years. Right? The brother-in-law. Yeah. And he ran to Cleveland and his courtroom got shut down in a 16-count indictment that does not go away. And I guess somebody can talk to... Uh, Giuliani He's the one somebody. that was married to the sister? Yeah. Yeah. Never yet used a gun in his life. So was he going to all of a sudden get balls up and get a gun and come looking for me? So, you know, to me, I'm just going to bring out, let these guys, and if you want to do the right thing, maybe you should talk to your kids and tell them the same thing and other kids. Let's not follow this life because I, I got nothing against any of their kids. I, you know, I hope their kids don't ever follow us, and I hope my kids do the same. And I've had problems with one of my sons. So, you know, the, the, the reality is, break the cycle, right? This is a terrible time to want to go that life. Terrible time to want to go that route. Uh, John, uh, again, thank you for flying out to Dallas to do this sit-down. We're going to put the links to both of the books as well as the GQ article. And if you want to find out more about his books or the article, uh, go to the link below. We're going to put every single one of the links on how to find out more about John A. Light's book. Uh, both the Gotti rules as well as the darkest hour. Once again, thanks for coming out. Thank you too, Pat. Yeah, appreciate, appreciate you. It.